Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to find the area of triangles and trapezoids. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use a formula to determine the area of those 2D shapes. So go ahead and get out your binder, turn to the math section, and get ready to take some notes. So before, you saw shapes called parallelograms, where you have a shape that has two sets of parallel sides. There was a formula for area of parallelograms, and that was base times height, or length times width in rectangle. However, today we're going to talk about triangles and trapezoids specifically. And that formulas are going to get a little different. So let's figure out how come. So first of all, two triangles are formed when a parallelogram is cut in half. And you can see that below here. If I take this parallelogram and I cut it in half, I have this triangle in red and I have this triangle in green. So I've got two different triangles here. And since I got that by cutting the parallelogram in half, again, you could do that even the other way and you still get two triangles. Since I can do that by cutting the parallelogram in half, the formula for the area of a triangle is one half times the base, and I'll use that little dot for a time symbol, times the height. So half the base times the height is how you find area of a triangle. The height of a triangle will form a right angle with the base of the triangle. That's something else important to know. And again, you can see that in the picture here. The height forms a right angle with the base of the triangle. So I like formulas because it's just plugging numbers into them and that is so easy to me. So when I see this triangle, all I need to do is identify in this question one, what is the base and what's the height? And honestly, it doesn't even matter if you know which one is which because the formula is just gonna be take half of the two numbers that you have. So I will go ahead and let you figure out which one is the base, which one's the height. Okay, so hopefully you looked at that and you could, you could see that the height of the triangle, remember the height forms the right angle with the base. So the height is the 16, the base is the 14. And then using the formula, area equals one half times the base times the height for a triangle's area, I can just plug those values into that formula. So instead of writing a B or base, I can write 14. So take half of 14, and then multiply that number by the height, 16. That is how you plug in the values into a formula. I just put those numbers in for what they are in this formula, and the formula will work every time to find the area of a triangle. So by doing that, I get an area of 112. I'm not totally done yet because I wanna mark that this is area, which remember is all the space inside of this 2D shape. So since I wanna mark that it's area, I need to use a symbol called inches squared. I know that it's inches because that's the unit that it gives me. If it doesn't give you a unit, you just need to say unit squared. But you have to have inches squared because it's like inside of a shape is the square footage or the square inches. So that's all I have to do. And that lets me know that I have area. And so I'm done. 112 inches squared for the area of this triangle. Let's try number two by yourself and then press play whenever you're ready to check. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to look at that by yourself. The formula is still the same. It's one half times the base times the height whenever you see a triangle. However, I just want to show you this a little differently. You could also write this as base times height divided by two. Area equals the base times the height divided by two is the same thing as multiplying by a half because times a half and divide by two are the same operation. So whenever you plug in the values here, you know that the two is your height because it forms a right angle with your base. So when you plug in those values into the formula, you have half of two times 3.5. And whenever you look at this straight across and you just start from left to right, if you take half of two, that's one. And if you wrote it like this one, this way in the formula, you'd have a two over two and that cancels out. So that's one easy way to look at this. And the shortcut here is to realize that since half of two is one and anything times one is just itself, you already have the area. It's 3.5 units squared. In this case, the unit is meters. So you wanna make sure that you always put the units squared so I know that I've found the area of this shape. Now a trapezoid has a different formula. So a trape trapezoid is gonna be a little different. This is the shape of a trapezoid. And I'm gonna talk about it a little bit. A trapezoid is one or more triangles and a rectangle combined. And you can see that in the shape below here. So you see this triangle. And if I cut this again here, you have a rectangle. So you have two triangles and a rectangle. That is the shape of a trapezoid. So here's the new formula for us. You ready? Pay attention to this, this is really important. The area of a trapezoid is half of the base plus the base times the height. So this little B1 
just means the length of the first base. B2 is the length of the second base. And I always get questions about this. So let me just clear some things up right now. It doesn't matter if you know which one is which. These are the bases because these are the two things at the top and the bottom. These are like the flat lines. It makes a right triangle whenever you um, have the height attached to it. It doesn't matter which one's which because of the commutative property. 7 plus 12 is 7 plus 12 either way. So another thing people ask me is, isn't that an exponent? No. An exponent goes at the top. This is at the bottom. This is like a little footnote that tells you first base, second base. It's just part of the formula, but it really just means add your two bases together. Then you multiply it by the h or the height and then multiply it by a half, just like we do with triangles. So the, the formula for triangles, if you notice, was one half the base times the height. The same thing for a trapezoid, since it's really just two triangles and a rectangle. The only difference is with this shape, there's two bases. So you add up the bases, then you take the half of that times the height. So let's use that formula to determine our area of this shape. This is a trapezoid, remember. So the formula for this is gonna be one half times the sum of the bases times the height. So let's plug in our numbers here. So the bases, like I said, are seven and 12. I know that because they're the flat lines. They're the straight lines. It's, what's, it's what the shape can be sitting on, essentially. And we multiply that by the height. Now here's where people get confused. Which one of these is the height, five or four? The height always makes a right angle. So this is the height. It's the dotted line. It's the thing that connects the bases at a right angle. See how it makes an L shape here? That's how you know that that's the height. Not this five slanty. I don't care about the five slanty. That's not a base because it can't sit on it. It's not gonna be parallel to the other side. That five has nothing to do with this and I'm gonna completely ignore it. I'm just gonna use these numbers, the two bases and then the height. So now that those are all plugged into my formula, I just need to solve it out. Using our order of operations, I know I need to start in parentheses. So I do 12 plus seven first, which is 19. So half of 19 times four gives me my area. And again, you wanna be smart about how you're solving this problem. If you don't have a calculator, doing half of 19 might be a little more difficult. But if you do half of four, you can do that first and get two. So you can do half of four is two times 19 is 38. And just like we did with triangles, parallelograms, rectangles, it's going to be in inches or units squared. And in this case, I use inches because that's the unit it gives me. You have to put that little inches squared or else I don't know that you're talking about area. Remember, area, again, is just the shape, the, the feeling of the shape, the carpet inside of this. It's just what is the area inside of the 2D shape. All right, guys, that's it. I mean, at the end of this video, please comment, what's your favorite shape? Today was pretty straightforward since it's just formulas. So we learned about area of triangles and trapezoids. Now you should be able to use those two formulas to determine the area of those two D shapes. So now you should go back to the calendar and put any other assignments you have left for the day. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.